G'day. In this tutorial, we'll be taking a closer look at the cutoff versus button two bet pots, specifically the dry rag flops. And we'll be focusing a bit on the turn river play and specifically focusing on the common lines and some interesting bits and pieces here and there. So, as we discussed last time, the different flop textures lead to a different checking frequency and different bet sizes for both players. On average, the cutoff range is weaker than the button's range, and so the cutoff will often check to the button. If the cutoff needs to defend that checking range with some strong hands, they've got a lot of the big pocket pairs pre-flop, which the button doesn't have, so they can go for the for a check raise on lower types of boards with those big hands. And they've also got stuff like Ace King and a lot of Ace Queen, which the button might not necessarily have too much of. That can also go for a check raise or at least defend that checking range in some kind of way. So when the cutoff checks, the button needs to check back fairly frequently. So one of the most common lines um, that actually happens on these kinds of boards is just checks through on the flop. And so if it checks through on the flop, you need to know how to play the turn in the check back line, right? There's because the game is is quite dynamic, the ranges are fairly close. There's betting for both play for both players with some parts of the range on most boards, it's almost never going to be that one side does a range bet and then the other side defends by just calling. The most common line is the check check line on the flop. So I guess we can have a look a little bit at that to start. Let's pick a nice board with a decent check back frequency. Let's go with Ace 7 2, the kind of Stock standard dry type of board, even like King 7 2s. But here, A A7-2, you've got the flop play, 81% checking frequency on an ace. Remember that the cutoff's got a lot of weak ace in the opening range compared to the button's stronger ace x, which calls the raise. Right, in terms of the frequency of top pair, you got 23.2% here for the for the cutoff, and then 24.1% for the button. So it's not like the button is the button's range is like devoid of ace x and the button actually has more sets like there you go 4.4 percent sets versus only 2.25 percent sets 1.42 percent two pair for, for the cutoff here not a lot of two pair for the button because they don't really call the open raise with a lot of ace 7 or a lot of ace 2 suited right they do have a fair density in the sets because they flat a lot of pocket pairs pre-flop and the top pairs on average is going to be stronger than the top pairs that the, the, the cutoff have opened at the top pairs of the button flats is a bunch of this ace queen offsuit, ace jack offsuit. It depends on which kind of display method you want to look at. Look at it. Ace jack, ace 10, ace 9. The stronger ace x with a good kicker. And that, 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 good, that good kicker is, is going to show down a fair amount. But there's a lot of these pocket pairs as well. And just some high cards. So there's going to be a, a bunch of checking back. The, the button just can't stab their entire range because they get raised by the opponent's ace king. Right? So that ace king is checking a lot on the flop with the intention of going for a check raise at least some of the time. So seven is doing the same. And because the board is so dry, it's very difficult to outdraw an ace. If you have an ace, you end up blocking your opponent's value component, at least on the flop, the value component of the opponent's range on the flop. And so then your opponent is more likely to, to be bluffing and then you want them to continue bluffing the turn by just calling or check back the turn and then you can value better over. So let's have a look at the check back line, um, which will be fairly important. So let's have a look at the turn report. In, in this turn report, you can, once again, play one is the cutter, play two is the button, and go and have a look at the different sizes. You've got 4x pot here, 2x pot, the pot size bet, half pot, and then water pot. And once again, the cutoff on this A7 2 on the turns on, on, on average, checking about 71% of the time. Now, the bet sizing is a bit interesting. You've got a high frequency of 2x pot bets, then you do have pot size bets, right? And the reason, because like on these certain turn cards, the traps that the cutoff had on the flop that no longer want to continue trapping in terms of going for a second check raise will now have to bet reasonably big in order to get enough money in to, to, to grow the pot by the river and threaten, threaten snacks. 4x pot bet, similar. You've got the 7 there. I mean, that, that, that's actually pretty interesting. Let's, let's have a look at that. So seven, seven hearts, 4x pot bet with a 7x, 
Yeah, this kind of makes sense because the button doesn't really have too much 7x at flats preflop in terms of percentages, 0.5%, and a lot of that would have bet the flop a decent chunk of the time. This middle pair, 1.25%, 1, 1. 7, 6 tabs a flop a lot, 8, 7 is 2 pair now, which bets a flop at a high frequency, and then on, on that 7, that 2 pair gets discounted again by by half, and then this A7, which didn't really flat much preflop, and the 7, 6, which bet the flop a lot of the time, represents only a 0.5% of the range. So they've got, in terms of trips or better, this is about 1%, 1, 1%, 1, 1 point something percent. Very small amount, trips or better. So when you've got trips yourself and you're in the cutoff on this kind of board, like an A7-2, A8-2, knowing that your opponent just doesn't have that particular middle rank in the turn card pairs, just bet four times a pot because they have nothing to defend with, right, uh, against your trips. They don't have anything that can block your trips. So the only thing that they can really do is just bluff catch, right? And when in, in this bluff catching spot, in this calling range, you look at the calling range EV here, the amount of equity, right, against the opponent's range when called is 61%, but the EV is down at 3.6. So 3.6 out of a pot of, of 30, right? The same pot of 6, you make this enormous bet, and then they only get 3.6 out of that 30 when they do call. Okay, and obviously folding substantial amount. The amount that's being folded, when you bet four times a pot, you expect them to fold about, what is alpha for a 4x four, four pot bet? It's going to be 4 over 1 plus 4, right? So it's 80%. Yeah, folding 82.1%, which is saying that the bluffs, which have been chosen for this big size, have some checking EV. And like on, on the turn here, there is going to be a check check again. So the hands which bluff do have some checking EV. And for this big size, if you look at kind of these very unmade hands, like the unmade hands look without a flush draw, right? Looking at stuff like King Queen, 10 8, 10 9, random airball bluffs. So the, those airball bluffs will have a small amount of checking EV because when it goes check and they make a pair, they can check again and win and win sometimes a showdown, which, which will happen on boards this dry, right? Like it goes check and then an eight comes and you've got this eight, eight, eight six suited, right? The eight six suited now EV has gone up to about half the pot, right? Even though it's just checking and then hoping the opponent checks back a weaker pair. So yeah, a bit rambly there, but hopefully you guys understand what I'm going for when you look at these kinds of turns and you see these big bets. It, it means that there's some major asymmetry in the range and you need to take advantage of that by choosing a certain bet size. Once again, for the... 2x pot bets, 7, a 3, a 4, a queen. Fairly bricky kind of cards. And I've noticed like here on a 3 and a 4, a queen and a 5 to some degree, the equity of the cutoffs range goes down. This is basically just saying that the cutoffs range was fairly draw heavy on, on, on the flop in terms of drawing to high cards, right? If you look at the cutoffs range pre-flop, it's very... Broadway heavy and high card type heavy. And so when it goes check and it's an absolute brick, the cutoffs missed, but the checkback range of the button is more pocket pairs. And the reason why there's a 2x pot bet there is because now that those high cards have missed, the strong hands in the cutoffs range don't have to, don't have as much equity to protect in terms of the air. So the air in the cutoffs range can just more, more easily check fold. The equity doesn't have to be protected as much. So let's have a look at the three. Offsuit 3, very rookie card. The sets, set of 7, set of 3, set of 2s, ace, king. This stuff they didn't bet the flop. That was trying to go for like a check raise. Now it just bets twice the pot. And then like the checking range is left fairly weak, down at 42.1% equity. There, there's not a lot of draw equity with these hands at the bottom anyway. And because it's not a lot of draw, not a lot of draw equity, you don't have to trap as as much with these types of hands. Um, and you can just check fold. So check, small bet. I get this quarter pot bet folding 40% of the time, right? So what is that saying? That's saying that there's a lot of air in this range which checks twice. It doesn't necessarily mean that when you're the when you're the button and your opponent checks twice you that you should bet. You should just take take your showdown because you know that your opponent has a hand that basically they're giving up or they're like drawing very thin on boards this dry, right? And if they're drawing very thin, 
you don't have to deny that much equity. So the incentive for betting is lower because they're drawing very thin when you can just check and then have them try and bluff you and you, and you bluff catch or something like that. And it's the same kind of thing, right? The incentive for betting small to not deny the equity is lower. And so the incentive for trapping to go for that check raise is lower. So these hands lead out and bet twice the pot. Twice pot call, I don't know, like a jack or something. Just jam river for, what is that, three times a pot. With these, these set, set of seven, set of threes, this ace king just going for this half pot bet. Yeah, I think that's, uh, over, over there, I hope that makes sense. On the other hand, when you get uh, on the other kind of end, end of the spectrum where it becomes a little bit more dynamic, a little bit more wet, and the checking frequency goes down, right? You've got the checking frequency going down on the jack, king, the queen, the frequency. Let's have a look at this king of diamonds. This king of diamonds is an interesting one. You've got a lot of the overbets here. Check, check king of diamonds. You've got a lot of the overbets, but a fair amount of checking as well. With the presence of the two flush draws, there is some more equity to protect. So you need to have some strong hands in the checking range. And so that's what's going on with these, this set of kings, this set of aces. Ace king, because it doesn't block that kind of stuff as heavily, will just still go for the, with a lot of bluffs. Check. And now there's a lot of checking back. And there's a pot size bet, knowing the opponent's got a lot of middling hands. The king also hits a lot of these Broadway king X hands and these weak king X hands, which open preflop. So the cutoff on this king has made a lot of middle pair. So that, that middle pair is being, essentially being used to defend the checking range. And so the checking range is fairly condensed and the button will bet big into that. And then the presence of the two flush draws is being used in this 2x pot bet to, to try and bluff the opponent off the hand. 2x pot bet folding... 65.9% of the time, which is basically saying that if you bet twice the pot, alpha is two thirds. So folding a little bit less than alpha basically means that there's a lot of draws in that betting range rather than like showdown type hands. Uh, when in contrast to the up into the in contrast to the to the previous on, previous turn cover which we looked at, which was the three of hearts, when you bet four times a pot and they overfolded, that means that there was just some checking EV, some showdown EV, which was sacrificed to make that bet. But here there's more draw. There's, the bluffs are very draw heavy. Okay, I think we've overanalyzed that ace seven two. We can go to another one, a little bit more interesting. Nine three, king nine three, slightly more gut shots for the cutoff. There's a lot of gut shots between the king and the nine, which open in the cutoff's position. We look at the percentages. I've got thirteen point three percent gut shots, seventeen point eight percent top pair, compared to only ten point three percent top pair for the button. The button has fewer king x. And so on, on the King X, there's a, usually a fairly substantial betting range for the cutoff in, in this formation. And on, on the nine, the three, surely if you hit the set of nines, the set of threes, there's some nine X, which flats preflop, but not a huge amount. So the cutoff has got a lot of, sorry, the button's got a lot of, essentially very heavy in terms of these pocket pairs and just ace high. So the cutoff can make their flop checking range fairly weak, knowing that the button can't really do too much to capitalize on that by getting small to deny equity. And then when they do decide to bet small, there's so much air on this kind of board that that air folds, slightly overfolding. Remember alpha for quarter pot bet is only 20%. Folding 28.8% and then going for a check raise with a lot of the top pairs over pairs, over pairs in pocket aces, two pairs king nine. But also the button here has this 1.5x pot bet into the cutoff's checking range. And this 1.5x pot bet is comprised with a lot of sets, right? You've got the little set of nines and set of threes, which is the main value. And then there's a little bit of two pair with it, with the king nine. And then there's some king queen, which makes it in there to cover some king X runouts. So it's not, it doesn't get too wrecked on, on, on a king. And you can get some, this one half pot in value with a strong king X I and mean, a king queen is top pair second kicker. So it makes that, that big bet. And then sees a turn and probably checks back on, on one of the later streets. We look at that line, that line is going to be pretty straightforward, I think. On the brick run out, check, and then King Queen goes for the second bet sometime, checking back a lot. Trips is betting again, looking at this pot size bet on the turn. What is the value component? It's mostly the sets, and there's a little bit of top pair and two pair, but a lot of that top pair and two pair is starting to check back. The buff to value ratio here is, as you can see, it's a little bit more than one to one, and the check back range has got a lot of just air which gives up now like looking look at this checkback range and how like weak it is 
how weak these hands are checking to give up. Right, checking these hands are checking to give up. Maybe they can make a pair or something, but mostly checking to give up. And then some of this king queen king jack type stuff, which had made this big bet on the flop, is now checking back and playing defensively. Bet turn or river brick check jam, and then this king queen is checking back the river. So that was just looking at that. But I really want to look at this check check line because this check check line is the one that happens most often on the flop. Looking at some of the turns. We can rank in terms of equity, all these different bet sizes. An ace, yeah, yeah, maybe an ace is interesting. Look at the different turns. Like these aces, there's a lot of big betting on an ace, right? The reason why there's a lot of big betting on an ace because Cutter's got a lot of ace king, which is sometimes some of that's going to check the flop in order to trap. And so when the ace king gets on the turn, that ace king is going to want to bet fairly big. Let's look at this one. I always forget about that. Ace of clubs, ace king, they're betting twice a pot, four times a pot. Nice big chunky bet with Ace King to get value now, and then there's this small bet to deny equity from those under pairs, which, if you remember back from the previous video when we we're looking at the flop play on the Ace King board, it was the same kind of idea: big bet on the flop, and then some some small betting to deny equity from the under pairs. You see there, Ace King seven. That uh, what I want to look at turn report. Highest checking frequency. High checking frequency is obviously going to be in, in these low cards, right? Because remember, the button's got a lot of these pocket pairs pre-flop. The set of fives, set of sixes, set of fours will materialize on, on those ranks at a high frequency. And, and just not just to mention that also that the queen high, jack high, ace high type hands that the cutoff had open pre-flop have now just missed the turn. So it's a bit of a double whammy. The, the button gets an extra set in, in, in their check back range and the cutoff has missed with their high card hands, which have tried to draw on the flop by checking and then having the opponent check back. So five of spades checking at a very high frequency, about 70% there. Yeah, and also notice when it goes check, in comparison with that, that ace high, high board, the checking frequency for the cutoff is down at 50%. So on, on boards which kind of favor the they favor one player and this board is a little bit is significantly wetter than the ace seven and two. Right, because there's so many different straight draws between the king and the nine, and a lot of those straight draws make it in. Like, for example, if we look at the checking frequency again on the queen, the 10, and the jack, yeah, the queen, 10, and jack, there's a lot more betting, right? Because the straights have made it, and then those pairs have made it as well. Anyway, we'll look at it after this, but the five, a lot of checking. When they check to you twice, you've got this half pot bet and this twice pot bet. The twice pot bet with the new set of fives, any of the set of nines, which traps to check back and does like this raise um, against these turn bets, right? So remember, like, you also have to protect your check back range on the flop sometimes when you're the button here. So you actually need to check back some of these middle sets and some decent top pairs to raise that turn bet. Otherwise, your opponent can just probe into you with their entire range or with a substantial proportion of their range. Check twice pot bet or brick river. And check and then jam pretty straightforward there uh half pot bet a little bit less straightforward because this half pot bet is saying i'm trying to deny a bit of equity trying to get a little bit of value when i've got a decent top pair or pocket pair below, above the nine and then do a bit of a cheeky check back with this set of with this pocket tens here or this nine x here after it's gotten value from these kind of weaker pairs weaker pocket pairs or fives which have now hit the turn Yes, yeah, so king nine three check. Let's have a look at the queen, all right? Because the queen's hit the cutoff's range fairly heavily, right? Because the cutoff opens a lot of queen x high card, like the queen jack, and queen ten, etc. And also on the king nine board, when the queen comes, there's jack ten as well. So it's improved a substantial proportion of the cutoff's checking range in this check line, and so there's a lot more betting. Bet half pot. That half pot bet is actually pretty scary now, not raising a lot, even when it's got a set or a straight, delaying those raises until the river, once the river sizing it reveals the strength of the cutoff's hand. A lot of raising there, even raising with the king queen against that small bet, small block bet on the river. Checks and then checking back a lot, right? Because remember this queen, even though it brings you ace queen, makes your king queen to two pair, brings you jack 10, it's, it just hit the cutoff's range stronger. So it's a lot easier for them to have a very strong hand like like the knights jack 10 or the set of queens or whatever which 
coins, the set of the pocket pair of coins will check a king high board fairly often because there's not a lot of benefit to to betting for like equity denial. How are we going for time? 25 minutes. Yeah, okay. Well, we're going to look at a couple of boards in a little bit more depth. Hopefully that gives you guys a bit of a better idea about how to play these kind of dry boards. In in the next video, we'll move on to the four span boards, which is still fairly dry, but a little bit wetter because there's slightly more straight draws. There's an open ended straight draw on some of them, all of them actually, compared to the dry rag where there's no open enders. But still fairly dry because there's not that many straight draws. So we'll have a look at that, have a look at the overview and take a look at more turns in the next couple of videos. All right, hopefully you guys enjoyed this tutorial and I will talk to you in the next one. Bye now.